thank you, Lisa. Thanks to each and every one of you. You're very special to me, and allowing me to have this honor means a whole lot. You know, I want to talk to you about one simple word, and that word is legacy. This past Father's Day, I had the opportunity, since my motorcycle is still up here, I took a ride over to an Antietam battlefield. And I would suggest that some of you also go to Antietam, or go to a Civil War battlefield. Because there at Antietam, it was known as the bloodiest day in the history of the United States military. 23,100 men, dead, wounded, or missing. The battle was a standstill. Lee retreated back across the Potomac, went back into Virginia. But the important thing about Antietam was this. President Lincoln saw it as a victory, and he decided to embark upon the Emancipation Proclamation. And also, he did something else. He said that for the first time, men of color will be allowed to wear the uniform of the United States. Hear, hear. See, men and women have always stood up and taken up the mantle of liberty and freedom and democracy for this great nation in uniform to fight against our enemies, foreign and domestic. And if we understand what is happening right now in the United States of America, I believe, as Cynthia talked about, all things somehow seem to come back. As George Santayana once said, those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And so we find ourselves on the battlefield fighting against the exact same enemy that Jefferson knew about. When people talk about, you know, Jefferson had a Koran, well, the reason why Jefferson had a Koran was because he wanted to know who the enemy was. Absolutely. And there are the and what they thought We think about this same ideology that beheaded the British soldier, Lee Ritchie, as he walked back to his barracks. Did you think about the response of the leader of that country when he said that maybe the soldiers should not wear their uniforms? Oh, when you think about just this week when the president sits down and says, we want to go into peace negotiations with the Taliban. Oh. And he starts basically trying to describe what the Taliban basically will never be. The Taliban sent their response. They killed four soldiers in Bagram Air Base. And they have said that they will continue to attack. If you want to sit down and have peace talks, that's fine. But unless every single foreign soldier leaves Afghanistan, we will continue to fight. We have to have people that understand, just as those men marched into the line in Antietam, that we must march into the line. Brigitte, and what she has established, each and every one of you, what you are doing, you're marching into the line. We need to make sure that we pass on the legacy of the greatness of this country to subsequent generations so that 120 years from now, we will still have an act for America. We will still have an America. We will still have patriots that are standing up and celebrating this great nation. But even more so, we gotta make sure 120 years from now, we stay out of a place where a person like Julia can come to to find freedom. So Julia, and I'm trying not to get you. <laughs> I don't deserve this. <clears throat> you do. Because I served on battlefields so that you would not have to go through what you went through. I have two daughters, and it is appalling to me that there exists an ideology, there exists people that would do such a thing to you. And I pledge to you that as long as I have breath in my lungs, that I will continue to fight to make sure that the people that did that to you will get their nuts crushed. <laughs>
legacy that we pass on. So that one day we were told that no one else was a man that fought for their mother. So God bless you, God bless you all. And thank you for honoring me tonight. But more so, thank you for allowing me to display the courage that is necessary to ensure Julia and all others always have a beacon that they can come to. God bless you.